Michelle. Um, so much, Michelle, for that. That was really amazing. Um, really appreciate it. This is such a beautiful room, such beautiful people. It's such a beautiful day in Austin. It's warm. It feels like 80 degrees to me coming from Chicago. Um, I love it. How many of you are from Austin? Oh my gosh. Okay, anybody from Chicago? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes, so happy. Did you get here very easily and simply? Because I was in the airport for six hours over here yesterday. Yeah, you know how it is, right? Southwest. Yeah, no, I wasn't as American. I guess you're saying I should have been Southwest, right? Okay, thanks for that. Um, I appreciate it, yeah. Next time I'll definitely do that. Um, I, um, you know, before I bring up um, Esther and Coral, my agency contest strategist, I just want to first of all thank you, Michelle, for having me here. I'm really delighted. I'm so excited about your company. I'm glad that you're changing the name of your company for a multitude of reasons. I agree, you're scaling, and you're amazing, and you're a woman founder. So please, everyone, thank you. 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 Thank um, but anyway, before I bring up Esper, I was going to say that I have been married now for about 26 years, and the industry has changed significantly. Um, what has changed for me is when I was planning my wedding, and I should actually say my mother planned my wedding. It was a whole other world, and it was like, what have I done? What have I done? I just wanted to go to Jamaica. And I, you know what I mean? But it was a very different situation. I mean, it was really about giving me, me the budget, what is the date, where is it going to be, and that was pretty much it. It's very different now. You know, we're dealing with people that have personalities and they want to know who you are. They want to know who they're buying from. They want to know the personality. They want to have a conversation. They want to see what your voice sounds like. They want to see what your face looks like. They want to know what your cultural experience is like. It's very different. And so when you think about that context, it changes the game because that basically means that you have to step up and rise up a little bit and bring yourself out a little bit more intensely than you probably are comfortable with. You know, when I was getting married, it was really, you know, just very, very simple. Now I look back on that and I think to myself, it was so tactical. I have no recollection of who I had worked with. No clue. I don't remember the venue. I don't remember the person who helped organize it. I don't even remember the priest at the church. I almost don't remember where I got married. I mean, I just have no story at all, except that the next day I found myself in Florida looking up saying, what happened? <laughs> what happened? What happened? How did I get here? I didn't even think I was going to get married. I had no idea. Now I have three children, and I have teenagers, and I have one little small kid, and now I'm thinking to myself, you know, just, I'm not doing that. I'm not, whatever happens, you know, first of all, I mean, I don't know what the, what the cultural experience is now in terms of, women and men, or you know, men and men, in terms of who pays for what. But I will never forget the day that my mother ordered top shelf liquor for the wedding, and my father-in-law, who I'd only known for a little while, called my husband, then fiance, and said, what is happening? She just ordered $10,000 of booze. We are not spending 10 grand for booze. And of course, think about 26 years ago, $10,000 for booze for an hour was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot of money, okay? So anyway, please, Esther, come up. Um, introduce Esther Coral. This is my agency content strategist. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's a good thing, yes. Marriage and almost ended divorce, so. <laughs> so good to see all of you here today, am I? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Wow, there's so many beautiful, bright, and shiny faces here I today. Swear I swear I love it. for having me. Yes. Safe wedding for us. Okay. All right, well, um, welcome to the How to Market Like a Big Brand. Um, I am Ginger Burkengill, and I love the introduction, Michelle. That's fantastic. Um, I've really um, been in business for quite a while, and I do have a couple new clients, which is pretty exciting. Facebook, I'm going to spend some time talking about Facebook. I know, it's kind of like, the happy side of Facebook and the scary side of Facebook, right? It's too big, so. Um, all right, so here is some information if you wanted to reach out to me. And I don't know what the hashtag of the event is right now, but what's the Sage Conference? The Sage Conference is the hashtag. How many of you are on Instagram? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Twitter? Okay. LinkedIn? YouTube? Facebook? Awesome. All right. Well, that's good to know. Okay. So the one thing I would like to do, because this is a digital marketing class, 
is to take one picture of this event, doesn't matter what it is, and hashtag the event, and definitely tag Michelle. Is your, oh, is your tag open to be tagged? Yes. Okay. And just indicate what you were here for and what you did. Just really simple. Just do one thing like that, and that way you can help spread the word about her company. And also, don't forget to tag yourself and say why you're here. So. Okay. Um, you can reach me at any of these locations. I would love for you to follow me on Burke Creative. And then my podcast is Honest Bill Guy Podcast. Really exciting podcast. I interview um, entrepreneurs and business owners about their journey to entrepreneurship. I just released a podcast with Danny Wirtz. He's a fourth generation owner of the Chicago Blackhawks and a company called Breakthrough Beverage. He's got a really interesting story about how he's transforming his family business using technology. Um, this is Esther's information. So it's Yay, Esther. Esther. <laughs> I love it. Okay, great. So All right. Let's spend some time talking about what we're going to be going over in this presentation. How many of you guys have heard the term thought leadership? Thought leader. It's one of those terms that have been thrown into the entrepreneurial lexicon, and it's been used so much that sometimes we forget what it actually means for practical, everyday use as small business owners. So we're going to be talking about how to establish yourself and your expertise and your business as thought leaders and as specialists. Um, some of the components we're gonna be talking about, things like visual storytelling, I see lots of cameras here, different kinds, I see lots of smartphones, we're gonna talk about visual storytelling and what that actually looks like, and talk about some strategies you can use to pump up your visual storytelling around your brand, your company, and yourself as an expert service provider. We're also gonna be talking about the differences between the social media platforms and help you start thinking out of the box about how you can use some of these platforms. I saw lots of hands go up for things like Facebook and Instagram, a little fewer hands for things like Twitter and YouTube, so we're gonna start helping you think a little bit outside the box because some of these things have been around for a while and we've gotten complacent about how we use them, so one of our specialties is helping people think a little different about their social media strategy. And then we're gonna talk about Googling up your business. Google is a legacy product, it's been around forever. But as a service provider, there are lots of little boxes that we can miss along the way to appear as professional and as visible as possible. So we're gonna to touch on that. And then we're gonna take up some additional resources you know, at the end of the presentation right before Q&A &A, and, and find some ways to help you guys get started and, and move forward on your journey. And speaking of Google, we are gonna be giving away a Google Home Mini at the end of this presentation. So I'm gonna pass around the guys. How many guys brought business cards? So I'm gonna pass this around. Just put your business card here and right before the Q&A. We are going to up oh, our lovely Santa wise. <laughs> so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna pass this around that bag. Put your business card in. We're gonna pull it right before the Q&A and give away this awesome Google Home Mini. Yes, Google Home Minis are great. Really tiny, and you'll be able to plug it in in your room tonight and just like ask a question about your business name and see if you can find it. And if it doesn't show up, if it doesn't show up in some kind of way or some kind of duration, that's a sign. Start thinking about voice. Really? Start thinking about voice. By the time I get married, I want to be like Google. 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 Google when you think about what Esther just said, the reality is, is that when you think about attention, you're really competing against people that have the same tools that you have, and so they can do a lot of themselves. So you have to interrupt against a little bit. You have to think about things like that. And um, I kind of want to make one mention of something, Rent the Runway. So what I love about the Rent the One Runway story is that the company started off in one way, deciding to help women you know, rent clothes. But you know what they became? they became one of America's largest drag cleaners. Yeah, and they had no idea that was the business they were in. And the, the lesson behind that is sometimes you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you are. You don't know what you're becoming until you see it and you look around and you're like, you know what, that was not what I had in mind. That wasn't my dream. I did not want the company to become a dry cleaner. You know, but let me tell you, that dry cleaning company is killing it. They are killing it, they are making so much money and they had to transform every single process in their supply chain and their operations to accommodate being one of the country's largest dry cleaners. And you know what, they're embracing it now. You know, it's become different. So when you think about what we're sharing and to Michelle's point, there's always the what if. 
So a lot of the information we're going to share, maybe you know some of it, maybe you don't. Maybe it's a lot of information, but this is a safe space, and we're all here together to try to learn, to make ourselves more viable and more effective as we start to grow in our businesses. So just you know, level set with that. So entrepreneurs now have the power in their hands that no one's ever had the power ever. You know, there was a time that people only could advertise their newspaper, but now everyone can advertise. You know, Amazon, General Motors, McDonald's, you know, um, Toyota, they use the same exact tools that we have in our hands right now. So what does that mean? That basically means that you are not just competing against the person next to you because you're really not anymore. You're competing against companies like General Motors <coughs> and McDonald's that are spending millions of dollars a quarter, multiple millions a quarter across the world to advertise and to gather everyone's attention, including all of yours. And if they're gathering all your attention, how can you stand up above all that so that you can get attention too? So don't think that you're competing against the next wedding planner. You're not. You're trying to figure out how can I be different because the reality is when you're online now, everyone looks the same. Everyone has the same clothes on, the same hairstyle, the same eyebrows. Everyone gets their lips waxed. You know, all the kids have on Nikes, the same shoes, the same jeans, the same glasses, Warby Parker. You know, everybody looks the same. So what is it that's going to make you stand apart? There's a million wedding planners out there. And by the way, what do we have in the room? How many wedding planners do we have? Love it. Okay. And how many florists do we have? Oh, beautiful. What about makeup artists? No makeup artists. Hairstylists. Retail stores? Do we have any retailers that actually have a storefront? How many people are in product sales? No product? All service. Is everybody service? Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's even tougher, right, online, because you're service. You don't have something like a physical thing to say, look at what I got. Touch it, feel it, turn it upside down. Well, we'll talk a little bit about more about that, too. Um, Digital and Creative Marketing 101. So think about the full system of being online. So most of you said, yes, I have Instagram and I have Facebook. But online is a lot more than it used to be. A website was all you ever needed back in the old days. And you know, you still need a website today. But now online means all kinds of things. It means advertising. How many of you buy advertising? Where have you bought it? Facebook or Google? Or where's the advertising come from? Raise your hands if you bought Facebook ads. Okay, who bought Google ads? A couple? I know you did Mary from Chicago. Okay, so advertising is vast now. You can buy Google ads, you can buy Facebook ads, but you can also buy ads on Spotify. Spotify has a small business solutions platform now where you can actually have someone read your business out live and record it and it will run on Spotify. You know, that's really amazing. There's all kinds of places to run advertising. Um, blogging is important. How many of you have a blog and how many of you maintain it at least once a month? <laughs> I hear that. I know. What? No. <laughs> Who has got time for that? <laughs> okay. Blogging is a big deal because you can blog not only on your website. Who has a, first of all, do you have a blog section on your website? Okay. Thank goodness. Okay. Good. So there's blogging on your website. There's also blogging on uh, LinkedIn. That's a great place to blog and write articles. You can blog on Instagram, believe it or not, with people that do that. So consider writing a lot of content to make your message get out. Social media, of course, all different kinds of platforms. I actually think TikTok is really cool. Um, a lot of the young you know, women are on TikTok doing all kinds of cool things. So having a presence on TikTok is not a bad idea, especially if you're in the wedding business. It's a good thing. You might have to find someone to help you do it, right? Think about that. I mean, really, website's critical because your website, your website is your repository of all the data and information for your company. So if your website doesn't have robust content and if it isn't backed up by SEO, you may not show up on search. And people are doing a lot of searching with boys. My children do not type anything on Google. They ask questions. That's all they do. So consider the future of your business and consider your audience. How are your audience how is your audience getting to you? You know, where are they? Are they asking questions or are they typing? What are they doing? Think about that. That's important to know. And then a, um, Esther is my content strategist. So I've been writing content all my life. I'm a writer. However, the way that the world is happening and things are changing so quickly and the level of lift that I have to bring, you know, I decided I've got to scale up my business and I actually have to bring someone on to help. And so Esther is managing a significant amount of content for the agency as well as I am too. 
So consider that the basis of all of what we're going to talk about is creating custom content. How do you create custom content for your business that goes beyond placing an ad saying, come here, buy, get, buy this, click this, and click that? What do you need to do to develop an extraordinary amount of content? It's easy to stay in the business. It's harder to get out of the business and think of it a little bit higher level. You know, doing all kinds of tactical stuff, that's what we do every day. And that gets us distracted. Very high level, these things always work for business. So having a beautiful website is great, but having a machine underneath the website that runs effectively with things like search engine optimization is more important than a beautiful website. And there's a great platform called Yoast. Does anybody use Yoast? Okay, Yoast Premium is way better than Yoast Free. So that's something to mention. So I'm glad somebody loves Yoast. I love Yoast too. Yoast is Y-O-A-S-T.com. And there's a free uh, platform you can install on your website, or you can also get the premium, which helps you work a little bit better. <coughs> but you've got to have powerful SEO on your website. It does work. Google would not be a trillion dollar company if it weren't for search engine optimization a la Google Analytics. It actually does work. Um, Pay-per-click advertising is tremendous <coughs> if you've got the money to spend and if you have the lift. Very high level. If you're not spending $1,500 a month minimum on Facebook alone, you shouldn't be spending your money, and that's not even enough money. It's just not enough. And that doesn't include Instagram, that doesn't include Google, that doesn't include YouTube, that includes nothing else. But $1,500 is not enough money. You need to be somewhere between $30 to $75 per day, per channel, to be effective on these platforms. These are trillion dollar companies, they have trillion dollars in valuation in the market, they're shareholders, and they're not gonna let you live there for free to help you sell your business without paying for it. And it's gonna cost a lot more because we have a lot of attention that we have to get to garner. Who has an email marketing platform? Hmm, I see some people saying. I set it up a year ago. <laughs> I haven't set an email yet. Um, how many people send out an email at least once a month? Once a quarter? Once a year? <laughs> Once a day? Oh my god, okay. So we'll talk a little bit about email marketing. There's tons of resources for email marketing. I highly encourage you to figure out your email marketing game because you can make a lot of money and get a lot of eyeballs on email marketing, and I'll tell you later why. And the question of the day, how many of you have a YouTube channel for your business? All right, well, I mean, that's good to hear. Just a few people. We gotta fix that. We gotta fix that. We'll talk about that later. I got some cool stuff to show. Video marketing is super powered. Super powered, super powered. And so much attention is on Instagram. Not a whole lot of you are on YouTube, which means that you have more space to grow there, right, and to stand out. Um, this is not in the booklets. I believe you just have unique value proposition in the booklet. I will be sharing this presentation later with Michelle and you can distribute it to your audience. Um, but a simple digital marketing plan is required on digital marketing. I mean, this is a very simple plan. This isn't a complicated one. If you think about what Target does, Target has 50,000 of these things, but you have to strategize and plot out your journey in order to get the results on digital marketing. I don't even want to ask how much money you spent on Facebook and gotten a customer. Because maybe some of you actually have gotten a customer, I'd love to talk to you about that later. I want to know how you did that and how much money you made, if you actually made the money back that you put into it, plus the time it took you to actually launch the campaign. I want to hear about that. Generally speaking, if you don't do this, you're going to lose money. But I'm actually telling you not to spend money right now on Facebook until you figure out how to use it. So, how to create your perfect client profile. Something that's very challenging for all of us to consider is we, are very much focused on who we are and what we believe, it's harder for us to, on a daily basis, over and over again, consider what the customer wants, who they are and what they feel and what they think and what's important to them. I mean, we're, we're you know, we're egocentric. You know, we're, we're in our own spaces and we see our face every day. We're not really like putting ourselves on the other side. If you think about why Amazon is so successful, it's because all they consider is the customer. I went into an Amazon corporate office and I can tell you by the condition of the office, I'm like, oh yeah, they're only focused on the customer. They're not, and really, that's their whole game. They want to know the customer journey all the time. They want to know what the customer wants, and that's how the game has changed. And Michelle mentioned that earlier, that people expect a box outside their door. They know what we want, and they give it to us every day. So you've got to consider things like, what is the big problem you're trying to resolve? What is the one thing they want? And consider your own journey when you're trying to find out what to buy, 
or what you're trying to create or what you want any moment, what is your journey to get to that space? That's what we're trying to think about when you're coming up with a digital marketing plan. Um, what exactly are the results? What does your company bring to their lives? You know, what makes them tick? What makes them happy? What makes them passionate? What makes them feel good? What is it that they want? Think about what they want all of the time. Walk through your day thinking about what your customer wants all day. I know we're here today to learn, but I'm just saying, like, start thinking about what your customer wants. Think about what their habits look like. I just downloaded a great, a great um, thing called from a company called Column Five, and it's a brand strategy assessment. And, I, and if I remember the, the name of the thing to download, I'll, I'll send it to Michelle. But there's a section there which actually helps you break out each of your customers in a spreadsheet, and you can indicate, you know, here's my customer, and here's what they want, and here's how they live, and this is what they think. And it really does help map up the customer. And the reason that I say these are really valuable is that if you can map up the customer, then you can map up stories to sell to that customer and to communicate with that customer, right? And that's really helpful to understand. It's, it's, it's critical to know who you are selling to because think about the customers right now that you're making money from. Whoever they are, there's 10 more, 20 more, 100 more, 1,000 more of that same person. That's a profile. What is your most successful relationship? It took me years to figure this out. Now I understand very clearly who my customer is. I'm very discerning about who I take into my company now. Because I know that I can not only be successful for my company, but I can be successful for the customer. I mean, I know it's sometimes hard to turn down money, and I've done it, but I know, you, I know it's kind of hard for you. Can you teach me to do better? It's not worth it sometimes. I know, it's not. You're right, it's not. It's true, it's true. So think about things like that. Break up into buckets, and I'll share the link later, but break it up into buckets, each of your customers, so you can come up with what their journey is. This is a great way to think about what customers want. This is something that you can create a website around, you can create video content around, you can create blog posts around. Think about what you're an expert at and figure out how to fit content into these different buckets, and then you'll have all kinds of stories to tell around this. This is important. You know, think about yourself. You know, when you're looking for a pair of shoes, how do you find that pair of shoes? First of all, you have an intent. You're like, I need a pair of new pair of shoes. And so understanding what the intent is is important. And then being there where your customer is when they have the intent is very important as well. How do you get to where they're going to be? Well, you pretty much have to be everywhere. This is not an automation uh, presentation. I'm not going to really be able to talk too much about how to automate some processes, but some of this stuff is going to have to be automated. They're going to have to invest in how to make things easier for you so that you're making money while you sleep and you're not working all the time. So what makes you unique? There's some basics I'm creating your USP. This is in the booklet. There's a worksheet. Page 21 to 23. Okay, awesome. So this is really helpful. Um, Take a look at things that make you different. So remember earlier I said we all have the same shoes and the same jeans and the same hair and the same makeup? So, you know, we do. I mean, in a lot of ways we really do. So consider what makes you very different. If you put the list of the things that you know are the same, then try to dig deep and figure out what makes you different because that's the place that's going to make you stand out, not only from each other, but make you more discoverable in multiple places online. So consider things like that. It's a really difficult process to do this. I mean, when I went to Tuck and I did this process, and I was like, that killed me. I was like, oh my god, I have no idea what makes me different. I don't know. I don't know why I'm different. And I know why I'm different, but it's hard to articulate it and to really be authentic with yourself about what makes you special. Because you do need some level of confidence to make sure that you say to yourself, I am amazing, I am great, I am remarkable, I am special, I deserve this, I know what I'm doing, I'm an expert, I'm powerful, I know this, I know that, I know this, I know that, way more than anybody else. That's what makes you different. You gotta dig into a very deep place to get that, especially when you're a woman, because we have a lot of barriers to our confidence and our ability to sell ourselves. It happens all the time. It's a really difficult thing for us. So setting smart goals for your business. Goals, we all have them. I'm sure everybody in this room is particularly familiar with vision boards, right? I mean, this is like, I'm telling you, when I got married, we did not have vision boards, but I sure wish we did, because I would have told my mother, I'm getting married in Jamaica, we are not having 300 people sweating, and I'm not gonna pay $1,000 for this dress. But you know, it was out of my hands, it's out of my hands. Um, but when you think about goals for business, think very deeply about what your goals are for the business, not for yourself. And you have to have this because you have to know where you are, 
especially when it comes to digital marketing, because when you go on Instagram, you'll be looking around like, oh my God, I've been on this for like two hours now. What happened? You know, is that your goal? I don't know. Think about it. Think, like, what is the point of being on Instagram if you're not on there to communicate what you're looking for, or communicate to a customer, or communicate what they want, or communicate what you want? Why are you wasting time? You have to have a reason. Otherwise, get off quickly. Otherwise, you'll start losing money, and it's going to go by really, really fast. So specific. It's got to have a specific number, your goal, a specific number attached to it. It needs to be measurable. You have to be able to measure the progress of your goal. Like, where are you in that journey? And some of the ways to measure are things like Google Analytics. Other ways to measure are having spreadsheets, which indicate what you're looking to do, when you're looking to do it, how fast it's going to take, and how much money you need to spend. Things like that. And just, you know, even do it really simply. Just come up with one goal, one simple goal, and then work on that one goal, just so you can kind of get started in this whole process, right? It takes some time. You have to make sure it's achievable. Can you actually make this happen? Do I need to hire five people to do this? This goal is not going to work for me right now because I don't have the budget to bring five people into my company, right? I mean, think about things like that. Is my goal to go to Europe? How much money do you have to get there to like go to like a huge conference in Europe? Can you make it? What do you have to backtrack to make the money to get there? It needs to be relevant. It's got to support your vision of success. Obviously, it's got to be, what does it look like? And again, keep in mind, we're evolving now. Technology's making things happen much more quickly. Run the one runway, dry clear. <laughs> you know, who knew? Um, and it needs to be tangible. It's got to result in some benefits to your company. This has to be put in place before you start digital marketing. You've got to make this happen. Otherwise, it's a total, complete cesspool of despair on digital marketing. I mean, I know it sounded kind of negative, right? A cesspool of despair. <laughs> oh my God, a cesspool of despair. It kind of could be. Um, so, examples of smart goals. Um, Take a look at some of these goals. I made them up. Um, how many of you have revenue goals for the next quarter? Who knows how to get to that revenue goal as far as digital marketing is concerned? Does anybody have like ideas? Has anybody thought about this? Thought about it? Okay. Okay, okay. How to put all the pieces together, okay. Okay, well, it's good to know this is, again, a safe space, and this takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of energy. There's a reason why, you know, these, these marketing companies make so much money because they help people do this kind of work. So, think about some of these as potential goals. Some of these goals can actually be tracked on Google Analytics, and maybe start small. Say to yourself, I want 500 people to come to my website by the end of the quarter. Well, what are you gonna do to make that happen? How are you gonna get 500 people to your website? How are you going to do that? One thing you'll have to do is very simply, every single piece of content you put out, ask people to go visit your website and check out a link. And that way you can track it in Google Analytics. You've met your goal. I got 500 people on my website. And then you get encouraged and say, oh, so that's how that works. I get it now. That's the kind of thing that has to happen. It's got, goals have to be defined. They always have to be defined in order to decide if you're being effective or not. So if I say that I need to get 25 new people to sign up to my newsletter, by the end of the month, I have to figure out what is the journey for me to make that happen. So I have a sign-up form on every single one of my social media profiles. I have a sign-up on the first on all the pages of my website. I have a sign-up on my LinkedIn tree as one of the second options to choose. Are you familiar with LinkedIn tree? <laughs> Anybody? Okay. So LinkedIn tree. Um, somebody might have to look it up for me online on their phone right now. But LinkedIn tree is I think L I N K dot tree. Something like that. But what it is is it allows you to have all of your touch points for your business on a single link, which someone clicks it, and then they'll see all the different buckets that they can click to get to different things. Does that sound about right what I'm describing? Okay. Link tree, thank you. What did I say? Link in tree? I love LinkedIn. I love it. Okay, link tree. So it's linktr.ee. Okay, thank you. Um, highly recommend using that because you can keep everything in one place. Social media doesn't give you a lot of characters, so you can't put all of your profiles in place. Um, think about things like that. A really powerful tool. Um, let's talk a little bit about your website. So how many of you have updated your website within the last six months of the year? Oh, beautiful. That's amazing. That's great. Why? Somebody offered, why did you update your website? Or what was the reason? Anyone? We wanted to... Um Again, stand out mm -hmm. uh, in a saturated pool of wedding planners, and our focus is we're huge animal lovers, my entire team. So we did a full headshot revamp with our animals. Oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> 